Uh, okay, I'm probably gonna edit this video. But anyway, yeah, so I'm making a video because I am a black woman. And so this video, I'm gonna try to make it uh, simple and short, but it's kind of hard for me to do that just because that's who I am. I'm, I'm not really good at the whole short, small talk thing. You know, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but I just want to make this video for black women in 2021. Um, preferably women around, um, my age, because I think my age is like a pivotal moment for women. And I was, uh, subjected to a lot of things in my life that, uh, you know, kind of pushed me into this realization over time, even though it was something I was kind of already bred for at a young age. And I just want to make this message to let you know that if you're a black woman, um, that it's okay to be you. And I say that with an overstanding because I feel like, you know, when I talk, I try to do, a, I try to, um, when I, not when I talk, I try to, but when I talk, I want to have an overstanding because I think that whatever I'm saying is going to get to those people. And that's what matters the most is not about the people who, you know, want to try to misunderstand me or any other black woman, you know, we're bred in America where, there's a there's a a big narrative to misunderstand black people and to push things on us that you know aren't necessarily who we are and it's not it's not even a fraction of what we have to offer. And so I didn't really plan on making this video. I was walking, I was working out and I just decided to you know I just wanted to record a video and be transparent as possible. Um I always talk about like the kind of person I am is just I'm very when things matter a lot to me I I cherish them like I am very sacred with them and kind of selfish in a weird way and I feel like there's so many black women who uh have a lot of things inside of them a lot of feelings that they have inside of them even as a small girl growing up and they're not really you know, groomed to express them or they don't understand them based off of, you know, European, Western psychology, just based off being in America. And they don't, they don't cater to us being individuals, different individuals other than what they know, you know, as themselves, which, you know, you know, to that small or whatever demographic, I understand, but, you know, where does that leave us black girls who are trying to walk in the image of somebody who, could never understand us and uh you know it's sad and yeah I just want to let you know as a black woman that you know you're creative and I feel like creativity is the highest form of intelligence it takes a very intelligent person to you know be inspired to create and to you know and I don't know, I feel like the best creativity just comes from you, like inside of you, where it's just like, oh, I'm gonna go, you know, express this. And a lot of times, you know, I feel very, you know, out of place everywhere. I'm always out of place. Like I noticed that as a young girl, I always felt out of place. And it was always this, you could tell, you could feel it. It's like this, this energy to fit in everywhere you go because you know you stand out. And instead of someone grooming you to understand why you stand out and understand why you're black, bro, let's talk about it. Like they, and I get it, you know, our parents, it's a long, this conversation could go on forever. And I get it that our parents, you know, they were, you know, products of their particular time, but it's time for us black women, you know, I'm 23. So it's time for us black women around this age to really grasp who we are inside i would say that you know start with you first start with you first if you got kids which i have a son you probably can hear him he's supposed to be sleeping but this is what he does where he sleeps um if you have kids a husband or a boyfriend you know uh just stop stop cut out all the back all the noise cut out all those voices, there's so many things pressed in your mind, cut it out. Be by yourself and learn yourself because you are all you have 
And that is powerful. Don't let people think that, don't let people take that away from you. Because people will tell you that, but they say, you can feel it. You can tell they're saying it like, yeah, so fuck the world, right? But no, not really. Because that's a beautiful thing. When you're so content with yourself, everything around you makes so much more sense. And that's something that I had to embrace about myself because I spent a lot of time about by myself growing up. I was the only girl in my household. Uh, I have three brothers. And well, I had two at the time. My third brother came when I was like 12. Uh, but um, yeah, I spent a lot of time by myself. And, you know, I have a lot of I give a lot of credit to my mom because, you know, even though we have our differences, like she is. I, I believe one of the most intelligent, strong women that I've ever met. And I didn't understand that until I became a woman in life. And I had to really sit down and think about it. Even though she may not understand it, you know, uh, I do. And there's a power in us that we need to go find out about. Because Black women are not crazy. And we are not irrational and angry. You know, that's one thing that gets to me too. Uh, people always try to associate you with anger versus passion or understanding you. Why nobody ever took the time to talk to you instead of deeming you as something. People always want to label us with these things. You know, this hair doesn't mean anything to me. These earrings, like this is cool, but I'm a person on the inside and I have, I have things to talk about. I have things to say. And, you know... One thing I noticed is that people, because, you know, how we're taught and bred in America, you know, we don't look deeper than what, you know, not only we're told, but just what we see. And that's an immediate mess up with Black women because we are way deeper than what we put out here, what you see. And we come from a background of a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of torture, and that stuff has to be considered when you're dealing with a black woman, no matter how you want to put it, no matter if no one taught you, you have to understand these things. And I think that I, I like where the world is starting to come to because of the internet is that these conversations are being put out there just because black people are being seen more and you, you, you are questioning what you thought you knew now. And not only just black, not only white people, because I'm not talking about white people, just white people, black people specifically are questioning what they thought they knew about black people, what they thought they knew about themselves. And that's, it's, it's a good and bad thing, depending on how much of it or or discernment, because, you know, I think that you just have to find your voice um, in a world where they want you to. Be, be silent that's another thing that i can't stand as being a black woman people respect you or people not even respect you people can tolerate you when you articulate yourself a certain way or when you're quiet or when you are uh you fit the, the standard of a woman but that woman standard is a white woman you're not a white woman and we gotta keep it all the way real no disrespect to nobody if you take it a certain way maybe go do your research or you know, go self, self, um, or go look into yourself and go figure out why is it that you feel offended by me speaking on me, especially if it's not hurt, harming you or anyone else, you know? And I had to realize that I'm different and it's okay. And I want to learn about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut myself off from me. And that was just really big for me. And I keep smiling because this is this is cool. Like I never really I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Uh yeah, black woman, you could you be loud. You're loud. You know, you wasn't meant to sit in a corner and get by. That's not you. And if that's not you, you don't have to be that. No matter what, no one in a room, no one, your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, no one can take that away from you. And that's where they take away your power. Because we we were meant to speak up. We were meant to, you know, stand next to our black man, not behind them, next to them. We have a lot of power we possess, you know, and I just want people to really do their research. And I don't see a lot of videos, you know, about black women, especially around my age, right? I don't see a lot of black women my age, you know, going online and talking with some sense. Let's keep it real. Like, no offense, but like... 
it's cool to go online and talk about our hair, how we do our hair, how our makeup look and stuff that just really don't matter and don't even scratch the surface of what a black woman is. Because a lot of times we're also the people who uh, stand up to the people you at least expect. Like we also usually the people who speak up when everybody else is quiet. We also are the people who, you know, um, I feel like walk in a room and, and demand the attention of the room. And that's something that I admire about black women. You know, my experience with black women hasn't been the best, but that's just because I believe to be that, or that's just, I, I'm pretty sure it's just because how we were bred in America. You know, we were taught to be in competition with each other instead of looking at each other as, you know, sisters, bro. Looking at each other as um, friends and as family. And, you know, uh, weirdly enough, I feel like my mom, you know, because she was really big on, uh, she was just really, really big on religious stuff. But religion stems from spirituality. And I think that my mom was a lot more spiritual than she uh deemed to admit however uh religion just happened to take a toll over her spirituality no disrespect to people who are religious as well but guess what it is what it is do your research um and uh she taught me a lot of spiritual things that i take into my journey right now i'm not religious at all but i'm very spiritual and if you know what that means you understand that then you know you know what that is and so she really raised me to uh stand up for what's right for real like she, she would be the person I would see in our household that if something wasn't right, she would just, at some point, she would just, it would, it would take over her and she would just speak. And I'm not saying that, you know, I, I feel like with misguided interpretations and being taught the wrong things, even with a good intention, that will mislead anybody. So that's why it's good to do your own research and good to be your own, you know, uh, guidance in this world. Uh, especially because, like I said, they wasn't bred to make successful black people. And that's just what it is. And so, um, yeah, she just was the person who really stood up for me and stood up for her, for was right. And she was, uh, she was a lot different. And so because of her teaching me, you know, you know, the power of the tongue and, you know, to, I don't know, just be very modest. Like, I don't know how to put it, but <laughs> she just taught me so much about like, yeah, just as a black woman. And the only thing I would say that is weird, she taught me to, she never taught me about race. She never taught me about being black. She just taught me about being a, a woman and a person. And I feel like that was a good and bad thing, right? Because it was a great thing because when I went in the world, I look at the world exactly how I was taught. I wasn't taught like bad, right? I don't know what that means, but like, yeah, I wasn't taught the typical things as a child. Like my mom didn't let us be around like sex or she didn't let us be around drugs. She didn't let us be around people who use profanity. My mom was very, very, very like sheltering. And so that was a good and bad thing because when I got older, I had this pure like childlike heart. And I went around women and people just like, oh my gosh, you're going to embrace me because I'm embracing them. But it didn't go that way, fam. I got smacked uh, with life because black women, I looked so highly. I looked at them so highly. Like my mom, I used to like look at her like she was a god, bro. Real shit. Like I used to look at her like, bro, can't nobody touch my mama. She's so intelligent, you know, like. She got three degrees or whatever, but like, yeah, she was just, besides that, she was just very intelligent. My mom was a powerhouse. Like she was the power, like she was the source in my household. Like my dad would be like, uh-uh, talk to your mama. <laughs> and you know, I'm not saying that, you know, that's a whole nother story, but that really stood out to me. And I can tell because every day that I walk around my own house, I see that without even like trying, and the more I embrace myself and love myself, life made more sense for me, even when it don't make no sense to nobody else. And that's all I ever asked for. And yeah, so like I said, it was a good and bad thing because, like I said, good because I was so pure and I had a, a childlike heart. And I love children because I believe they do lead the world. And I look to my son. Weirdly enough, I look to my son 
to show me how to be in the world because he is the closest thing to perfection bro he is perfection in my eyes children are perfection and so i look to him for answers i look to him for you know understanding in a weird way um and it's so beautiful and i'm glad i was able to understand that being pregnant with him and now seeing him in the world it's crazy to see him manifest that stuff that i worked so hard on while i was pregnant with him because i didn't understand but yeah bad i would say it was bad because uh I didn't understand myself as a black woman like I should have. So I spent a lot of time, you know, looking at myself in the image of someone else. And so imagine trying, it's, it's the same thing everyone does every day. They try to self-reflect, right? But they, they don't really, like they go look at somebody else and they go, okay, so I like I like how happy they are with, with, with or I like how they, they seem to be. So I'm gonna go do whatever they do and, or I'm gonna go do what they do and then maybe it'll make me like me. But a lot of times, just even that instant of getting the compliments from other people and stuff, imagine how much you become a slave to something that you are not and how that just internally makes you hate yourself way more than you did maybe when before you even looked outwardly to be like, hey, this ain't right. Or, or hey, I'm not really liking who, what I'm doing right now. I don't really like me. I'm not feeling me right now. And yeah, I mean, so that, that was dangerous because luckily I feel like I was always protected, you know, by the universe. And I say that all the time because, you know, as a young girl, like I said, that pure childish heart never left me. Even now where I've changed a lot based off my circumstances, of course, I've adapted to, you know, my circumstances, but I never let, I try to, I try to every day work on never letting them take away that childish heart I have, that pure heart that I have, because that's what attracted so many beautiful things in my life and why I say the universe protects me because I believe, you know, having that kind of heart, you're always gonna, you're always gonna win, bro. You're always gonna win. Money don't matter. Uh, none of this temporary actuality stuff matter. And in reality, your heart and the righteousness inside of you will always prevail. That's what matters though. And I feel like that's what led me down a lot of uh roads where I could have went a certain way, but I just didn't because I was always trying to stay pure to my heart. And I knew when th things wasn't right, my mom, I remember, I'm getting chills, that's crazy. I remember my mom just used to be so big on what's right um, and standing up for it that it never left me. And I, I, she used to tell me all the time how when I was younger, bro, like I would not, I would not do things I didn't want to do. And I would stand, I would literally be like, uh-uh, I don't like this food, that's not good for me. <laughs> At like three years old. And to see me be that person where I'm in a room and I'm, I know that people, you know, see me as a problem because they know that I'm, I be like this, I be like, not, not, I'm intelligente, okay? Like, I'm the truth. And it, it's not, it's no ego shit. Like, if you know me, you just know. It's not egotistical, but I want people to stop telling people that they're not better than other people. Yes, you are. You are better. You better because you woke up at six in the morning and they chose to sleep till two and you knew that you wanted to pursue your day positively you worked out you ate what you're supposed to eat and now they want to look at you and i go and a lot of times you're going to hear me quote food and work and exercise is not to like belittle anyone because woohoo i'm 105 pounds down since my son or before my after my son because i gained more weight i'm 105 pounds down and i'm so proud of the discipline that i taught myself i always give myself a word of the year and my word of the year was discipline, and it still is. And I'm working so hard to remind myself that discipline was not is not bad, right? Because of the association with discipline as a child. And so you associate discipline with bad, but it's not. And I've learned that through food and exercise. And that's why I hold food and exercise so dear to my heart. But like I said, you are better than other people. And the reason why people don't want you to believe that, because they don't want you to ever unlock your true potential because then they'll threaten all of the the things they're comfortable with that they shouldn't be and that happens to me a lot a lot where i get around people and they'll take it as i think i'm better than them which i am and it's not by me like egotistically thinking i'm better than you it's because i want you to be better so i gotta be who i am i gotta be on my ass even if you're here or not because regardless if you're not here i still have to deal with that and then not only that you know i have such a big heart and I like to lead by example because also I have a son. I can't, they don't, they don't listen to what you say. They watch what you do. And I really try to, uh, 
you know, put myself out into the world the best way possible. You know, when I was a child, I told people all the time, when I was a child, like, it's weird. It never left me. We were very creative as children, but uh, limited, obviously, not no money, <laughs> moving all the time, you know how it is. And so I remember I used to always think of myself as like some type of like influencer, even though that wasn't a thing up until like a couple years ago. It's weird, right? Because I sound like I'm capping, but I'm really not. And like, I remember just being like in my head, always like, you know what, if some... I want to live a life to where if somebody was to interview me, what would I say? And if I was to say things, I want it to be cool stuff. Like I want it to be, you know, real. And I have to live a life that if somebody was to interview me, I could be real and tell them about my life. And it, it, it was real. And it was uh, a good life. And to me, a good life was that pure heart again, being righteous, you know, standing up for what was right and never backing down no matter how people perceive you or try to put lies on you or or try to make you out to be because you know inside who you are and that's all that matters and so you know that's what this whole video is about i'm not trying to make it super long but i talk a lot um but it's just about you know reminding the black woman that those feelings inside of you even if english right or words or the people around you can't understand it or you can't explain it they're very valid and they are actually the key to what leads you to who you are inside to where you don't have to put on facades if you want to wear your hair, wear it, but don't let your hair be you. You are what you are, you know, and don't be attached to these things. That's why when I go, you know, that's why online I always say, you know, you won't know me unless you know me in person and you had a conversation with me because you can be easily distracted by how I do my hair. You can easily be distracted by the clothes that I wear, which, you know, that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, you can be easily distracted by, you know, my lip gloss or just the little things that I decorate this temporary body with. But on the inside, that's what matters to me. You understand? Like, that's what always separated me from everybody else. Because you will look at me and think one thing, and I think that's what messed people up. Because when they talk to me, they're like, oh, uh-uh. Nope. And they back out. And I'm glad for that, for those people who back out. Because they, they you know, they save, they save their own ass. I'm going to keep it real. You save your own ass. And it's not even to be funny, but I just wish that you know, more black women got online and talked about what they actually wanted to talk about instead of what they thought other people wanted them to talk about. And so that's what this video is about. So I want this video. I'm going to close out here. I want, I'm going to be making, you know, I'm probably going to make more videos like this. I don't know. But yeah, I'm just going to put this out because I mean, what is there to be afraid of? What is there to be afraid? Like, what, what is fear? What is fear? What is fear? I, I struggle with anxiety disorder since I was five years old. What is fear? You can't tell me when you experience extreme panic where you feel like you're going to die at five years old and you don't even understand death. Like nobody in your house talks about death. My mom literally would be like, oh, don't say that. You said death. Like, what is that? And I had to realize that it was nothing but holding me back. It was a wall between the things that I wanted in life and what I knew, who I knew I was and what I was living in, and playing into all day and being miserable all day. Yeah, no, I'm good. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna post my videos. You may not like how I look. You may not like how I'm speaking, but you'll be okay. It's somebody else's video you can watch. And that's real. And it's, and it's gonna be for whoever want it, want, it to, want it to be for. And so I'm gonna close it out talking to my beautiful black women, you know, the, the gods of this planet um, and of this world is that you are not your hair. You are not that makeup. You are not these clothes. You are not your kids. You are not your man. You are nothing of this world because you created this world. You created this world. Remember, you're the creator. You decide. You understand? You decide. And I and I love you. I love you because I love me. And then because I love me, I know how to love you. I want to learn how to love you. I'm not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. You can come to me about anything. You can talk to me about anything because I am your friend, okay? Okay? It's no, it's no smoke. I want you to be the best you can be because that's, that makes me happy. We believe in a playing field. There's no mountaintops. There's playing fields. And if you win, I win. If I win, you win. You're never going to be put out. You don't have to compete with me. I love you. So with that being said, <laughs> that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you watched. <laughs> if not, it's cool. Bye. <laughs>